Thatcher Pitch from the Carlton Footy Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Dane Zorko here from the Brisbane Lions. Jason Johannesson from the Western Bulldogs. Luke Parker here from the Sydney Swans. It's Roy Sloan here from the Adelaide Crows, and you're listening to the Coaches Panel. Max Hall and Melbourne Football Club. This is Matt Fife from the Fremantle Footy Club, and you're listening to the Coaches Panel. Number 32 in the 50 most relevant as a player that established himself as one of the best premium options in 2018. However, injuries hurt him in 2019. Good news is, in at least some of the formats, he's priced. Very difficult to ignore. To talk about Devin Smith, i got Rids back. Hello, buddy. Hey, mate. How you going? Good, mate. And yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Good, man. Well, let's talk about um, Devin Smith. Um, he was, um, you know, retains his mid forward eligibility. Uh, he hasn't lost that at any point for a very, very long time. Still just the 26 years old. And while I do talk about a poor season, he still did manage to give us a ton at some point across the year in all formats. He's uh, priced, uh, and in different levels across the formats too. 101 was his best AFL Fantasy and Dream Team score. What was a 102 in Supercoach? Both those scores came against the Melbourne Football Club. As an average, he only delivered a 79.4 in AFL Fantasy, well down on that early hundreds average from the year prior. While another big drop away, 68.7, is his Super Coach average. In terms of prices, well, every format chooses to um, add and award discounts differently, and you're seeing that across these formats uh, with his starting price. Just over 335000 in Super Coach. In AFL Fantasy, right up at the top, $720,000. And in Dream Team, $516,000 is around about the mark you're going to find him. And Rids, anyone that started with Devin Smith found themselves with a little bit of pain last year. He had reasonably high ownership. I think it was about in Dream Team and Fantasy, um, where he was coming off a career best year, it was around about that 20% marker ownership across the formats. But from an elbow injury in preseason training right through to when he did his PCL in May and ended his year, it just was... A, a stop-start year for Devin Smith and his owners. Yeah, and a lot of people actually started with him because of the form that he had in 2018. Yeah. So, so he really did hurt a few teams early last year. Just sorry, did I hear you right? That AFL fantasy price tag. Can yeah, you just repeat that. Yeah, seven twenty thousand. So um, they have a different uh, way they choose to allocate their discounts. It's been all explained across um, some of the traders' podcasts, but they choose to allocate their discount based off not just one year, but of the higher of the two years of, of the averages. So it does make him. It, you know, I'll, I'll be really honest with you. I don't think you can start him in AFL Fantasy, just given at that price point. I know it might make him unique, but he, he's priced only $1,000 off Dustin Martin. So for me, I, just, I, yeah, I just don't think you can go in. Yeah. I was just going to say, he must be priced around Dusty. Yeah, he is. So for me, you know, like this is very dream team and super coach relevant conversation. Yes, someone might be keen to start him in AFL Fantasy and knock yourself out. Absolutely do it because he is discounted on what he has previously done. Now, is it as much as the other formats have given? No, it's not. But if you think he can go back on 105, sure, knock yourself out, start him. I'm never going to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. Um, but last year, Rids. You know, while we should talk about that 2018 year in a moment, last year he didn't really fly out of the gate anyway. I know there was the injury concerns, but, you know, just the one dream team in fantasy ton, the two additional scores over 80, so an average of 79 um, across the seven games that he did play last year in Supercoach, also just the one ton, and that was his only score over 80 with an average of 69. His role was similar ish. Um, you know, to the year prior, where he was, you know, rotating through the midfields and the forwards. Um, I suppose coaches are going to be really hoping that that pick him to start this year, he gets somewhere near what he did in 2018. I think really what we need to do is we need to just rule out his figures in 2019. Yes. So we need to just say, look, what's done is done. So we have to look at his years prior to that. Now, he had a couple of... He's always been... I don't like the word injury prone, but he always seems to cop injuries from year to year. And then 2018 came along and his move to Essendon meant that he had a really decent year. He played 22 games. So so all we can do now is think, well, Essendon was slightly disappointing last year. Yep. They'll probably be looking for more intensity through the midfield with tackling pressure and everything else. From all reports, and I know everyone says this, he's flying. Yes. So, I mean... Long story short, I mean, 
we can only base our thought processes around 2018. Now, I just want to make sure, like, what I generally do, okay, is I try and make things more simple for myself, okay? So what I do is when I start looking at the starting price, I look pretty much 10 players above and 10 players below that sure. starting price to see whether he represents sort of value or not at that price. Mm -hmm. Devin Smith is the 44th highest ranked forward in Dream Team for 2020. It's even better 44th. than Supercoach, yeah. Look, I mean, I just... 44th, MJ. That's crazy, is it not? Yeah, and two and years ago, he was the number one. Well, well, exactly right. And in Supercoach, and I'm just looking for it now, I'm already... Where am I? I'm already into the hundreds, am I not? You're a long... You've got to go a long way down the list in Supercoach to find Devin Smith. We, let's talk about that 2018 year. A career best year for him. He, he broke the tackle record uh, in the AFL with 186 tackles. Uh, he had, I think it was eight games where he had over 10 tackles or more. It was huge. Um, from a fantasy perspective, though, he averaged 96.8 in Supercoach, 11 tons, uh, an additional four scores between 90 and 99, so 15 um, of his 22 games, 90 or above. That's important. Um, of those tons that he got, he had four over 120. Dream Team and Fantasy, my friends, this is where you need to just calm your farm and excitement because it's pretty good. Average of 106 that year, 12 tons of them, half were over 120, including a 150. And then in addition to those 1,200s, he had eight games where he scored between 90 and 99. Yeah, just two games all year that he didn't crack the 90 marker. Then remember what we're talking about, Rids. In Dream Team, he's priced as a, around about that 40 to 45 ranked player, whereas in Supercoach, where he was previously in that top 10 to 15 sort of forward options, he's priced heading into triple figures of ranked forwards. 115. Yeah. 115 in Supercoach. So, Riley Knight, and you're a Crow supporter, I know, and you're very one-eyed, sure. but Riley Knight is priced more in Dream Team oh, than Devin Smith. Oh, no, thank you. This is what we're sort of saying. Like, if, like I mean, it doesn't matter if he's injury-prone or not. It's not. This, no, well... Jonathan Patton is priced more expensive in Supercoach than yeah. Devin Smith. Yeah. That is ridiculous. So if you're looking at value across Supercoach and across Dream Team, he doesn't have to do a hell of a lot to make a couple of hundred thousand. Like, what are we talking about? 80, 85? He does his job at that. He does his job at that. Now, on the flip side, and we'll just we'll talk about AFL Fantasy for a quick one. Sure. The problem with that, okay, is he's priced at, what, mid-90s, mid to low-high 90s, around that mark, yeah. around well, he's priced mark to what mark. Dusty is, yeah. Yeah, so what, 97? Yep. So that means, I mean, he's pretty much got to play at his best from to the either go. break even or, you know, be uh, be representative of value at that pick. So, yeah. so, I mean, that's why we're sort of saying, look, I mean... I think it's safe to assume with the two trades, use and lose types of situation with AFL Fantasy early on, mm. that a, um, Devin Smith can easily be brought in and your team can be rejigged a little no bit problem. if he starts the year well. Absolutely. But I think in, I think in Dream Team and Super Coach, he's almost a walk-up start, is he not? It's going to be very, very difficult in those formats. And again, everyone chooses to build their starting squad with different approaches, but with a lot of question marks just about how our forwards are going to go this year. Most coaches would, would assume the baseline that Lockie Whitfield should be there and thereabouts as the number one midfielder this year. Again, injuries you know, preventing that from happening. Um, Dusty Martin should again be one of the top options. And then, um, and you've seen it already through the 50 most relevant with the amount of forwards we've already talked about in contrast to defenders and mids and rucks you could throw a blanket over the next 20 to 30 names across the formats and it could go in any order and that's what I like about um, Devin Smith is we know he can score well in based on his 2018 year but 
even at his old club at GWS earlier in the 2010s, like he's had in 2014, he played 21 games to average 94 in Dream Team and Fantasy, 90 in Supercoach. The following year, 80 in um, Dream Team and Fantasy off 20 games, 87.9 in Supercoach. Gosh, even the next year, you know, 80 averages ac- across all the fights. If he delivers us something like that in Supercoach, He's done his job. He needs a little more than that in Dream Team, but gosh, he's done his job if he gets anywhere near those averages, let alone his career best of 2018. Yeah, and then when we look at the forwards, besides the two that you mentioned, and I suppose potentially Green if he gets ever if yeah. he ever stays on the park long enough. Yep. I mean, we're looking at Walters, yep. Zebul, Heaney. Yeah. Like guys that what, they're notorious 90 guys, are they not? Yeah, they're, they're guys that can have some the occasional big 100, but generally speaking, they're the type of players that don't hurt you if you take them on. Yeah, correct. So, I mean, if we're talking about Devin Smith having to do 80-85, which is only about, what, 5 to 10 points less than potentially 90, yeah. then, I mean, we, you know, and he's prized. Like, it's ridiculous. He's 160000 cheaper in Dream Team than um, Mickey Walters. Yeah. And, I mean, let's be honest. Would you be surprised if he's actually, you know, he may even out-average him for the year, depending on what role Walters plays. Absolutely. Play. No, if someone said and Devin's getting 90 across the formats, I, I wouldn't blink at that at all. I'd be like, well, he's done that multiple times, let alone at Essendon, so I'd believe that. And he's... 200,000 cheaper than Walters in Supercoach. Yeah. It is his pricing in, in Supercoach. Like, as a contrast, the highest cash cow that we've got this year is Matt Rowe. He's $207,300 for an additional 132000 Less than 130000 you get, Devin. It's nuts, isn't it? It's, it, it really does make that, it, that if he's fit and firing... In the limited trade formats of the game, it's very difficult to not start him. Even if you don't like stepping stone forwards, even if you like the guns and rookies approach, given what we know he can do, it's very difficult to pass him. I I suppose, Reeds, let's talk about that injuries because he has had numbers of seasons where it's not been an issue. 22 games at Essendon just two years ago. Um, 21 in 2014, 20 in 2015, 18 in 2013, 20, you know, in his debut year um, at GWS. It really has only been two seasons where it's been a, a catastrophe, and that was last year at Essendon and probably 2016 at GWS where he only played the 12 games. Outside of that, maybe I'm looking at through too much silver lining. 16 games or more at the price we're starting him in Dream Team or Supercoach, the, the risk isn't there. At this point in time, the risk isn't there. But when we get into pre-season games, I want to see him tackling. Now, we've spoken about this with any guy who has hurt his arm or shoulder previously, okay? Yeah. Devin Smith's got a high percentage of his points, you know, year to year from tackles. You can look at the 2018 average, yeah. okay? 8.5 a game. Exactly. So the fact of the matter is I want to see him tackling in a preseason game. I know it doesn't happen often and everything else, but you'd think that someone coming off a year of injuries and stuff would be doing pressure acts and everything yeah. else through all the games. He wants to test himself out. Now, we spoke about this with Rockliffe and stuff over the last couple of years, mm. that we just didn't see that tackling, you know what I mean? So yes. that, that made us wary of starting him and everything else. Whereas with Devon... If he is not tackling and applying that pressure and running up and down the ground that we've seen previously along the wings, yeah. I don't think, it doesn't matter if he's $10, I yeah. don't think I can go there. It's true. But if he shows anything like that in the preseason, at that price tag, it's I just can't see how you don't start with him. Yeah, so for you, you're, you're saying uh, the, the canary in the mine in terms of to know whether or not he's the guy to chase you is... What does he look like in the preseason matches and to some degree an intra club match? Um, what is that swarming tackle pressure? Is it there or is it not? Because if it's not, well, that's where he builds his scoring base. He is the kind of guy that he's going to sit around the high teens, super, super low 20s, really. Let's be honest. This is what we want from Devin Smith. Around about 20 touches a game, seven tackles, and a goal. 
That like if we got you know stats like that, he'd be right around that ninety marker average for us. I, I believe that's exactly what you're looking for, okay, from him. So if he's and again, I, I never look at preseason stats, okay, because sure. they're all warped. But the fact of the matter is, I want to see him tackling. I want to see some sort of um, going at high speed, applying pressure. Yes. Essendon are coming off an awful season like doing that. So I want to see that before I even go anywhere near him. But at this point in time, because we're only talking, what are we, middle of January? Yeah. So why not? He's absolutely got to be in your planning teams right now. Yeah, look, the only reason you're probably not going near him, again, AFL Fantasy, right at the start of the episode, we've, we've kind of discussed that, moved on. Yes, upgrade to him, but certainly not a starter in my view, but do what you want. In Dream Team and Supercoach, we need to see that tackling. The only reason you're probably not going for him as a watch list is you do not like stepping stone forwards. You only like to start, and again, maybe that's a trap, but you only like, I like premium forwards, I like cash cow forwards, I don't want to play in the mid-price range. I could understand that. Whether that's right or not, time's going to be the judge on, but I could, if someone said, I don't pick mid-price forwards, I go, okay, well then Devin's not for you. Well, I'm going to go further than that, MJ, and I'm going to tell them to reconsider. I would too. But I'm just being because I think you're nuts. <laughs> if you think Michael Sonny Walters is a safe pick at a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars more than Devon Smith, I mean, I don't know what drugs you're on, but you need to start sharing them around. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, fair enough. It seems like in those two formats, uh, should hit we see that defensive pressure, that tackle pressure from from Devon Smith? That's the big ticket item you need to see checked off given it what he, we know he can do not just at Essendon but historically yes there is an injury concern but enter in with eyes wide open at this stage of the preseason he's doing everything required of him and uh, the coaching staff and his teammates are incredibly thrilled with him watch that role watch that tackle pressure that he brings in the in the marsh preseason and should you get tick 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 through there then I think in dream team and super coach he's a great pick MJ, I've got to ask you the obvious question. Yes. What, 30-something? Um, are we saying that his pricing in AFL Fantasy has pushed him down the list? Is yeah, of course, that- of course it is. Um, uh, you, this is very unique. If this was an AFL Fantasy-relevant list, he wouldn't be on it. If it was a Supercoach-relevant list, he'd be higher. Um, a dream yep. team relevant. It's because we like to talk about all salary cap formats of the game. It's just a part of the melting pot of, of how it all goes about. So, yes, he would be significantly higher um, ha- had not the AFL fantasy price um, really moved him right back at the pack. So I sort of asked that question because I've seen a lot of comments lately going, oh, he's absolutely a lock for super coach, should have been higher, blah, 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 blah. But again, remember, that's the key point, isn't it? We're doing it across all three. Yeah, that's right. There's going to be guys, you know, uh, that have turned up already that you go, well, they're not relevant in that format. That's okay. It's not for that specific. And there'll be guys that get higher again. The, the higher we get in the list, they're relevant in every format, no matter what. Um, but there's elements. It's all a part of the melting pot of how I, I go about making the 50 most relevant. And if you disagree, that's well, fine. It's a subjective list. Go nuts. Yeah, and well explained. Thank you, mate. Uh, let's talk about where he goes in a draft. He's got the potential in Dream Team and Fantasy to be an F1 for you. You probably should not be using an F1 selection on him. Could you get him as low as an F3, or do you have to jump a little bit earlier with an F2? Oh, look, I mean, this is this is like asking where do you find that needle in that haste? That yeah. Line. Um, you always, okay, so long story short, you're always going to have a crazy Essendon supporter in that draft. Yes. Who overrates absolutely everyone on their list. No, I said No. So. Uh, no, so, I don't He's a good man. No, yeah, but like, let's face it, he's not. Fantasy, yeah. He, yeah, oh, Jesus. Mm. Don't get me started. All right, we won't. So. De- Devin, where is he going in a draft for you in fantasy and dream team formats? If you... You have to research your opponents, okay? If there's a crazy Essendon supporter, he could go around about an F2 type selection. Yeah. Otherwise, he's sliding all day. Yeah, he but is. 
he represents massive, massive, massive value for you in a draft. He certainly does. He's the kind of guy that if, again, it depends, some draft formats that you play um, have their own projected averages that is kind of the filtering through there. Others, it's the average. Others don't do their own research and go off the basis there. You won't need an F1 selection on him. I, I think if you really want him, you'll probably have to use um, him as your second forward selection, but I'd be secretly hoping he could sneak through as an F3. Whether that's uh, just r- realistic or not, time's going to tell. And just remind yourself, he averaged nearly 10 points a game better than Dustin Martin in AFL Fantasy and Dream Team yeah. one year ago. 106, yeah. Yep. So Dustin Martin's going to be almost a top 10 lock Across all the drafts, yeah, very, very that's much. The so. sort of that's the sort of value we're saying. He's ten points better average than Dustin Martin. Yeah, you could potentially get the second best forward after Lockie Whitfield in round six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Correct. Not a bad place. Uh, Super coach, probably a little bit later. He's going than that again, given that uh, ninety-seven. You know, is kind of his best. That does put him right on the edge of a top ten forward. If you can go back to that, probably. Are you thinking a little bit later, like aim for him at an F three, but he might sneak to an F four, or do you think to have him, you have to go at a, a number two forward in Super Coach formats too? Well, I just he wouldn't even be on my radar in Super Coach at yeah. this stage. So, yeah. so I mean, he'd be. If you scrolled through after having pretty much most of your team set and he's still there, then pick him up. Because Supercoach is probably the format that he's most likely not going to excel in. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, but at his price point in the salary cap lines, that's it's where no he's brainer. really, really relevant. Yeah. But in the draft leagues, though, he's sort of... He could easily average 80 for the year and still average 95, 100 in Dream Team. So, yeah, no question. So, yeah, he, it just doesn't seem to be his thing, super coach. Yeah, it's he's definitely more of a dream teamer uh, and an AFL fantasy scorer. Hey, mate, appreciate your thoughts today. Have we talked about Devin Smith? Easy as. If you want to check out the article, uh, it is online now for you at coachespanel.tv. All the links for the other players revealed so far in the 50 most relevant. You can go and check that out. Um, The good news is we're getting real close to all of the formats starting to open up already. We have confirmed Supercoach is getting underway January 22nd. Dream Team's generally within 48 hours of it. And Fantasy, well, that should be right around the corner as well. We get into the number 31 player in the 50 most relevant, and you'll see his name and you'll think I'm nuts, but there's a reason he lands where he does. 